All right, what's up guys? What's going on? Pete here with Green Dreams and uh, here's another short video for you. And right now I'm sitting by my uh, Japotacaba Grove is like what I like to call it. And this is a big large area mat that we have all just Japotacabas on drip. And I talked about in a couple of videos back about large Japotacabas not being able to keep them in stock. And you can see that's the last of my 30 gallons over there. Those are no longer for sale or available. They were uh, actually gonna end up getting planted in bigger pots and probably gonna move them back towards the greenhouse. And I actually plan on adding some Japotacabas in my new greenhouse just to get a little bit of that um, cross-pollination benefit, potentially get that freak. That's how the that anomaly came about. So, you know, having that other flowering plant in there, you can actually start doing some breeding work. Probably not gonna quite take it that far, but I'll at least have the other fruiting plants in the greenhouse. So. What this quick video is about, just to let y'all know that we just got some more 25 gallons in. I ended up doing a trade with another grower down south and I got about eight of these in. And these are large Sabras. They have a, a trunk that's probably, you know, three inch across um, on some of them. This is a smaller one right here. That one's probably more like a the bottom side of a baseball bat, you know, and these trees are probably, I'm guessing seven, eight years old, potentially within a year or two of fruiting. And I know the first question I'm gonna get is how much is a tree like this? Um, a 25 gallon like this in this size of this age is about 400 bucks. You know, 15 gallon Sabras run about 200 bucks. I have fruiting reds that run about 250 in a seven gallon. So just to give you an idea of the cost of these trees. Now a Sabra can take eight to 12 years to fruit from seed. Um, a red can take five to six years. Sometimes we get that freak, you know, that can fruit in four years, but typically five to six years. Um, what's even more exciting though, is the Scarlet. And, Big shout out to my buddy John Travis over at Morton and Sons. He's kind of, uh, he's put a lot of effort into this variety. And, you know, he's the one that kind of told me a couple of years ago, he thinks it's going to be the new hot one. And, you know, the Scarlet can fruit in like three to four years from seed very commonly. Um, I actually just got a bunch of Scarlet seed in. Um, I've been buying all I can get my hands on of this. And this time I got like 500 seeds. And I'm gonna put a few hundred of these up on the website. So I will have a couple of seeds available for resale, not a bunch. I'm actually gonna probably plant most of those out. I'm really excited about starting to grow these up and maybe even pruning them. And you know, I have this idea and this fascination one day of having bonsai scarlet japotacabas. So could you imagine a little foot tall, you know, japotacaba on your kitchen table or in your windowsill with the fruits on it. And so I could really see that potential possibility with the scarlet, you know, with the sabra, Sure, it can do it, but you're gonna be waiting a really, really, really long time. Like we sell bonsai Sabra Japotacabas. I think they're like 30 bucks or something like that. They're a couple of years old. They have like a pencil sized trunk on it. You're probably still looking at another seven years, you know, at least for that thing to fruit. So, you know, the Scarlet, in my opinion, is like the new hotness in the Japotacaba world. And thanks again for that one, John. So I have had a couple of people tell me, ah, Japotacaba, nothing special. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that there's a little bit of like a high tannin in the skin on the Sabra variety. A lot of people don't eat the skin. The more I've eaten them, the more I actually start to enjoy and I will eat those skin. You know, I know it's, it's very good for you. Um, the skin on the red is much thinner. The skin on the scarlet is quite thin. And I even have some, uh, some of the blue Japotacaba here, the actual true blue grape. And you can see this is the red, has a bigger leaf on it, gets a lot of really pretty pink growth on it. Very pretty looking tree. And you can see in the side by side here, red Sabra, red Sabra. So you can really see that leaf size difference. And then we can go to the blue grape, blue grape, which the blue grape is an absolutely beautiful aesthetic tree. Um, the fruits aren't the best in my opinion. I've only eaten them at the fruit and spice park. That's another one. It takes a really, really long time to fruit. So these are all my big reds. These rows were completely full out to here maybe you know six months ago when we first moved everything over here. And all these front ones are ones we've been selling off. And you know, these are kind of like selling my kids. I don't even like selling these. Um, I'd rather keep them, um, but I have been coming off of a few here and there. I'd rather keep them for the fruit, for the seed. Um, you know, the small amount that I get compensated in selling the tree, it, you know, it'd be more valuable to me to keep the tree and to get you know, four or five fruit sets in a year. The seeds alone on these things are worth a buck a piece. Um, you know, you start talking about the, the Sabra, you know, the seed on that is still valuable. Even though know, the fruit isn't as good, that, that is the preferred root stock if you're gonna be grafting. The red tends to sucker a lot. So everybody grafts onto that Sabra. 
All right, so we planted a bunch of those scarlet seeds out along with other varieties here over the last six months. And I've been investing pretty heavily in seed for these just because I know the potential of what they're gonna become in the future. So scarlet Japotacaba, also known as the Escarlarte Japotacaba, is available on the online store. We got new sobers back in stock. If you're gonna grow a Japotacaba and you don't wanna wait, um, you know, you're either gonna buy one big or you're gonna buy the scarlet because they just take forever to fruit. So that is the only downsize to the Japotacaba. Um, you don't have to have two for them to fruit. They'll fruit inside of your pool cage. Actually, my best accessible fruit around the property are the ones that are in my pool cage because the squirrels can't get to them, the predators can't get to them. And maybe long-term going forward, I'll, br I'll build other screened in areas kind of like I did with the, like I got for the chicken coop, you know, to keep those Japotacabas in just to keep the squirrels away. Cause it is a, uh, a never ending battle, you know, maybe something that you can get them to check on a residential scale. But when you're out here on 12, 13 acres, we have hundreds of squirrels. Um, I don't want to be culling them all. So I'd rather protect my trees than to fight off the squirrels. Cause to be honest with you, they're going to probably populate and reproduce quicker than I could keep up with. So squirrels are probably the only downside with the Japotacaba, but you know, my dream, my goal is, you know, in the next 10 years, Japotacaba has become more popular. You know, we see Japotacaba wine, we see more scarlets, we start see more availabilities, we see more hybrids. So the fruit, the future is super exciting with the Japotacaba world. And that's probably why it's one of my favorite trees. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. Thank you guys for all the support. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, you know what we do around here? Pounder.